Looky there, it's been over a year since the last one of these, so yet again, let's skip the intros, let's just say these are SCPs from the Keter class, which means hard to contain, that I deem a danger to you, a group, a cities, a countries, the worlds, or even the universe's survival. So, if they don't pose a threat like that, then I most likely won't be covering them. Today, we are telling you why you wouldn't survive the SCP Keter class 3501 to 4000. If the last video didn't drill home mental stuff, SCP-3503's existence as a contagious form of PTSD will do that in spades. Relevant to common symptoms of PTSD like dreams or intrusive memories related to traumatic events, great distress in response to trauma-related triggers, and an amplified fight-or-flight response. However, with 3503's case, an additional onset of symptoms can emerge over the course of three stages. With the first being normal symptoms of PTSD, albeit with frequent dreams of sad and satyr like creatures. By the way, sweet cheeks, I'm real. Dreams involving these satyrs appear occasionally and over the course of up to three years, with infected personnel beginning to think positively of their PTSD and having a better outlook on their condition. At some point, they will even think giving others PTSD will cause them to be happy. The infected will start to commit acts of wanton violence like bombings, shootings, and more, but trying their best not to kill as giving others PTSD spurred by them will spread the 3503 infection as long as as they are within 60 meters of them. Those traumatized in this way can have their symptoms induced much faster if left alone with the trauma deliverer, with the abuser giving a positive spin on everything they do with the small majority of people saying they see these satyrs while awake. If this infection were to go unchecked, it would be a world of PTSD-stricken people willfully harming and possibly killing each other just in the name of saying, yeah, I have a PTSD, it's great all while a naked goat man is parading around in the background of their vision and their mind. SCP-3506 takes on the form of a dilapidated building, spawning people that look like post-mortem affair legal professionals. Everything involved will occur over the course of 30 days, until a designated Clifford event occurs. Numerous people within the country 3506 has manifested in will be mailed a letter saying a distant but wealthy relative of theirs has passed away and left them a heavy inheritance, providing forged documents that back up these statements. Once 12 people have been lured in, the last will of their supposed relative will be read by the legal professional. In order to receive their benefits, they must stay within the building until morning. While this occurs, a tidal flood will encapsulate the surrounding area after sunset, preventing anyone from leaving and killing anyone that attempts to get in or out. Through the hours of 12 a.m. to 6 a.m., a cloaked, ragged humanoid entity will appear and begin to talk slaughter and dismember the 12 victims inside, ripping them apart and using their body parts as fashioned weapons to further its killing spree, even with the entity using the intestines of one victim to choke another. It is a brutal slaughter from within. To this day, not a single person has survived a night with 3506. The professional in question will act positively towards the guests during the slaughter and merely say their deaths are for theater. So so don't go accepting letters from a relative you've never heard of giving you a large amount of money, or don't be near dilapidated buildings filled with this, or a torrential storm will come down on you and destroy everything in the area. You know, come to think of it, that call you got about that uh, inheritance money, I think that Nigerian prince that rang you up probably wants to get on the cut, or your car's extended warranty people want to reach out just to talk about your car's extended warranty. SCP-3510 is Illuminati personified, being an anomaly that can control people in major governmental and economic positions of power. These individuals will believe they are members of a global organization called New Providence, a group believed to secretly control all governments and corporations on Earth that manipulate mass media, instigating global military conflicts to create power and wealth for these individuals. Infected powerful figures known as 3510A 
can indoctrinate others to work for them and create those known as 3510B, who will work as covert sleeper cells to prevent the assassination and conspiracy theories directed at 3510A. The only way to prevent and revert instances of 3510 is to mimic the anomaly itself, as well as create structures present within said conspiracy theories, eventually causing amnesia in both A and B subjects. Considering the world's most influential and powerful figures believe themselves as part of a secret society trying to gain more power and influence, it's easy to see them using it to cause further war, attacks, and more. Assassinations and murders becoming more frequent with those trying to unearth their group, it's possible the moment they are fully exposed, if that even occurs, they could commit an end-of-world scenario involving nuclear devices or using their great military forces to wipe out large portions of the population that do not bow before them. Militaries would be easily indoctrinated seeing as how A instances can infect others to fight for them and their so-called prosperity. With the SCP organization constantly trying to nip them in the bud, that day may be closer than we think. SCP-3518 is a thought extinct species of stem group arthropod. However, this current incarnation of the five-eyed, elongated proboscis and anorith-like creature is a duplicate specimen that is completely carnivorous, eating a majority of oceanic life, including jellyfish, sharks, whales, sponges, and corals. It will eat anything. They will gather in packs of thousands and reproduce hellaciously, being able to swap genders and reproduce six times a year, with each batch of eggs producing up to 500 fully mature offspring. 3518 carries a natural extreme durability to all forms of damage due to its hardened chitin and carapace, only being weak on its underbelly and head while growing to a maximum size of about 6 meters or nearly 20 feet within the first 5 months of its life. Due to all these factors, its durability, sheer numbers and pack mentality, and the fact that it will eat anything within the ocean, with something that creates these kinds of fully grown and all-consuming creatures in short amount of time, many ecosystems would be extinguished. Even the extensive efforts of the SCP organization had a difficult time wiping out over 90% of the species, with some of it still existing out there in the world. With them having to create cloned and artificial aquatic life just to maintain civilian dependency on what we flourish from the ocean. Realistically speaking though, this kind of wildlife would spread across the seven seas and within just a few short years, all aquatic life, coral reefs, and more would just cease to exist causing rising sea levels, less food, and even less oxygen for us to breathe, making for a more desolate and dangerous planet long term. Considering their diet, they may even consume anything that enters the sea. Diving into the ocean could prove to also be fatal as thousands of the 5 meter beasts could easily and quickly dissect you alive. SCP-352 is a frail, sickly-looking old woman speaking in barely translatable Old Russian. She retains the strength to carry over 400 pounds and run at speeds of over 40 miles per hour. Any damage she takes, even forms of disembowelment, dismemberment, and decapitation can have her flesh regenerate completely within a few weeks. Her entire body is capable of producing nigh-invisible thin hair-like strands at will in order to crawl up walls, vertical surfaces, and ceilings. The hairs also produce a chemical enzyme found in the SCP saliva that, when making contact with any part of a person's body, will immediately attack their nervous system, causing hallucinations, euphoria, suppression of cognitive or logical thinking, and suppression of pain receptors, basically making a person catatonic to the world, and, depending on the amount of the enzyme they were exposed to, could last from a few days to a permanent vacation. 
There is no discernible biological course of how she can have all of these abilities. While the victim of the enzyme is in this state, 352 systematically will remove their limbs one by one in order to make their movements more docile as she begins to eat them alive, slowly but surely. The victim's lack of pain and trance will mean they are alive, but in another headspace as they are picked apart like a bucket of Walmart chicken once she has you in her size. Just being pricked by her hairs could have you living in a dream like comatose, even if you are taken away from her grasp. There is no guarantee you will ever wake back up, and if you aren't saved, you'll just be dismembered bones left behind by an old Russian grandmother. SCP-3523 exists as a phenomenon spreading between clay quarries, affecting large amounts of clay worldwide. With an estimate 29% of the world's clay supply infected by this SCP being substituted into a crystalline-like powder indistinguishable from regular clay. If vibrations at an undisclosed level above 21 Hz are exposed to this faux clay, then the SCP becomes active, as it too will start to emanate sound equal to or greater than the sounds that awakened it. Buildings made from this SCP clay can emit sounds of up to 120 decibels, and to about 34% of people that hear this specific sound will undergo a mimetic effect. After up to two minutes, an affected individual will become paralyzed, only having their eyes be able to respond to any stimuli. Afterwards, a sporadic chemical reaction will spur within the body, causing one kilogram or 2.2 pounds of the flesh to be transformed into the SCP clay, with most people becoming completely converted and solidified within a span of just under two hours. The process of petrification can be slowed, but the effects are irreversible and inevitable. Basically, just being in anything made of this clay that is exposed to just loud noise can spur you into turning into a clay statue or a pile of powder as you watch and feel helplessly with only the sounds of the clay to accompany you. SCP-3526 is law against nature, with nature winning. SCP-3526 stems from natural disasters and dangerous weather events like tornadoes, hurricanes, floods, tsunamis, earthquakes, and avalanches, and will, on a wide scale, affect local law enforcement officials. If these disasters run the potential of violating any human ordinance law, like destruction of property or trespassing, then local law enforcement will directly pursue the naturally occurring event as if it were just a regular old human criminal and try to subdue it, ultimately leading to their demise as they try and handcuff a damn tidal wave. Police departments, militaries, governments could end up falling for this mental trap and crippling a country's defenses. Imagine a cop or whole military pulling over a tornado and getting blown away before they could blow it away. SCP-353 is if the holding labs in the CDC were a temperamental woman, being a lady of average build around 26 years old that has a potentially world-ending anatomy. Having the ability to siphon infectious material and bacterial agents from around her and basically absorb them and store them inside of her own body. She can release and distribute these diseases individually or as a whole depending on her own emotional state. With more intense feelings causes more potent forms of each virus and disease. She is largely immune to all of these agents, but will display symptoms similar to their phases if she attempts to manipulate the viruses within her. Her very blood contains strains of all of these, but not limited to HIV, Ebola, Marburg, 67 strains of the common cold, herpes simplex A, E. coli, cholera bubonic plague, SARS, and malaria. All of these are within her, and among these infectious agents, 30% of them aren't even known to the worldwide medical community, meaning she has possibly been able to mutate new viral loads to release at her own will that can bypass many immunization efforts and immunities developed by mankind naturally over generations. She has the capability to develop cures
answers to diseases in the world, and those we haven't experienced yet either. But overall, she is a walking time bomb of viruses. The fact that diseases that haven't even existed for over half a century, like the Spanish flu of 1918, can suddenly be unleashed onto the world again, alongside tons of viruses we have no preparation for all at once, could make for the worst biological weapon and plague the world has ever seen. SCP-354 is a pool of red liquid reminiscent of blood found in northern Canada. Periodically, entities will emerge from this volume of liquid and are immediately hostile to anything they approach. Creatures from this crimson pond have included giant bats capable of destroying large structures, bear-sized, almost porcupine-like beasts with razor-sharp spines killable only via napalm, black metallic spheres able to shoot concentrated forms of radiation radiation at people to gradually kill victims and then explode itself when damaged heavily, reptilian humanoids resistant to most forms of ballistic weapons and able to shred humans with ease, octopi tentacles emerging from this pool to ensnare people and drag them within the pond to never be seen again, and even freaking Terminator-like killbots that can emerge completely invisible to the naked eye to slaughter as many people as it can in a 60 minute time span before it shuts off. Basically, this pool of blood can summon seemingly random deadly creatures of any degree at any time, leading to the possibility of something we are not capable of killing or holding back, eventually breaking loose into the world. SCP-3542 is an ontokinetic, or being capable of manipulating reality, 28-year-old human male of French-Italian descent. Formerly known as Renard di Giacinto, and now known as the Red Fox, he is able to manipulate reality around him completely unaware of his ability to do so. Wide-scale emergency events will occur around him on a regular basis, causing him to inadvertently spawn items nearby that he will use to save the day and be a hero. He is also seemingly able to teleport to distant locations to reach these emergencies with a given explanation to how he got there being given later on. Examples including an office worker accidentally breaking a pen and the SCP's effect causing the ink to actually be a poisonous substance that turns into a gas when released. The Red Fox would appear in a gas mask to take the victim to safety. Others include a chef's cooking oil being replaced with gasoline, causing a large fire as the SCP burst in with the fire extinguisher. It's very possible this subconscious ability could lead to an, even an Avengers-level threat of city or even state-level destruction, as something like a nuclear bomb would replace a propane tank or something just in the spur of a moment just so the Red Fox can come in with a utility belt and gear to stop the chaos, but who is to say thousands wouldn't die beforehand just so he can be labeled a hero? <laughs> SCP-3544 is an anomalous event occurring every 3 to 14 days around the hours of 1.30 a.m. to 3.30 a.m. within the United States, specifically in the homestead of two adults committed to a romantic relationship. Between them, an anomaly of 3544-A will occur, preventing them from leaving their home, while 5 to 20 shadow-like humanoid entities designated as 3544-1 will enter the home through the front door, even if all the entries entrances are securely locked. Once these figures have entered the house, the events of the SCP cannot be stopped until it has concluded. The shadow people will circle around the sleeping couple, and then once they wake up, the shadows enter the body of one of the two, 76% of the time the male if available. The possessed individual will lose all autonomous control over motor functions in their body except their own speech, as they will attempt to restrain their partner via ropes, cuffs, nooses, chains, or anything available in the room. The possessed partner will also use blunt objects to debilitate and break their legs, and even use sharp objects to sever the spinal cord in specific locations to paralyze them, all while being able to vocalize and be conscious of what they are 
are doing to their own domestic partner, but not being able to stop themselves whatsoever. From there, the possessed partner will begin to surgically remove seven organs from their lover, including the pancreas, spleen, heart, thyroid, pituitary, and pineal glands, and either the ovaries or testes. During the harvest, one of the shadowy figures outside of the possessed will place a hand on the surgical subject, causing them to die on touch if they hadn't already died with all those missing organs. Shortly after, will a new shadowy humanoid emerge from the partner's corpse and join the congregation of the black silhouettes. The possessed will regain control of themselves, but now have to live with the graphic brutality they just unleashed on their loved one, often leading to psychological distress and even self-game-ending tendencies. If you're in a relationship, you could find these SCP figures appearing above your bed late in the night, and either one of you becoming an unintentional organ harvester, with one's essence becoming a shadow man while the other is either killed in the confrontation or have to live the rest of their life knowing they killed their partner so brutally and either end themselves or be incarcerated soon after. SCP-3568 is a brain blast to the extreme. A specific arrangement of simple geometric symbols that, when observed, will immediately cause the spectator's head to expand enough to where it will eventually explode. And, in the remaining stub of a neck that is left over, there will be a 12-digit number etched into that stump. Even describing the arrangement of geometric symbols to someone who can visualize semi-decent can cause their head to explode in a longer but definitive amount of time. Meaning, at any time, if you randomly draw out or someone draws out this arrangement or you see this displayed somewhere, you could have your head pop after feeling just a slight swelling sensation in your head. SCP-3574 is a contract service contactable via a phone number delivered via mail to people with ill or hostile intentions. The SCP can facilitate any number of ways of eliminating or harming a person for murder, illness, injury, or stealing possessions or their reputation. A person intentionally or unintentionally desiring these outcomes can call the number to speak with this SCP directly, which will be done a Hungarian accent while asking for monetary compensation. Sounds like my bitch of an ex-girlfriend. However, to send the funding, the so-called client will have to acquire a sheep and subsequently remove a body part to insert the cash, depending on the outcome they wish. The targeted individual will meet these fates depending on these body parts. The head of the sheep will result in their murder. The tail resulting in any illness designated by the client hooves leading to specific injuries or varying sorts, and the heart crippling finances or reputational losses. Illnesses and injuries caused by this SCP are irreversible with no hope of healing or a cure. If the client attempts to extort the SCP for information, money, or other things, then the SCP will advertently place the desired outcome on the client instead. Anyone on the planet can be the victim of this metaphysical hitman with nothing being able to stop them if a mere sheep's body parts are stuffed with cash. Attempting to find out more about this Hungarian hussy will result in a self-fulfilling assassination. SCP-363 is the Floodian Centipede, being identical to Amazonian giant centipedes, but when entering darkly lit areas or hunting during the night, will it mutate to grow to a hellacious degree. Reaching a size of about 10 meters by 2 meters, or 32 by 6 and a half feet, and growing multiple tentacles, mandibles, eyes, legs, and proboscis, and can only revert after being back in the light for about 2 to 3 hours. It will actively voraciously hunt anything with body heat in the night, using all other senses besides sight to do so. They can inject a chemical to paralyze a target so their mutilation can be easier as they rip apart a victim to eat their remains. It reproduces by using the still living bodies of its eviscerated prey to lay its eggs inside of them so that its offspring can be born in a matter of seconds to devour the rest of the body. The infants born from this method will attack nearby victims 
arms and injects them with a chemical causing a burning and bubbling sensation that will quickly hijack the nervous system, erasing the consciousness of the host and replacing it with a hive mind intelligence saying ominous things like, The flesh is like milk to us. And, We are here. We are many. Basically being Halo's flood, but as more of an insect that more painfully dissects its victims to create more of its species to consume and reproduce while converting people as it expands its influence only being deterred by fire and open light sources. With its exponential reproduction rate and sticking to the shadows, its numbers and kidnapping of consciousness could easily overwhelm the population in a short amount of time, if left unchecked. SCP-3640 is if Five Nights at Freddy's was bought by Disney. Brochures seemingly distributed by the Walt Disney Corporation will reach out to people and those that read it and go to their designated locations in the US state of Florida will have mascots of famed Disney characters including Mickey, Donald, Goofy, Manny, and others of the core roster appear to hunt down those that read the distributed reading material. If more people read this brochure in a group and go to these locations, then the appropriate number of mascots to match that number will appear appear accordingly. Armed SCP squadrons have been sent out to these instances only to witness Donald Duck arising from a nearby river, resisting all weaponized fire only to be wiped out by these mascots and never be seen again. Although the costumes of the mascots have been observed to be empty, dismembered human remains have been discovered within them alongside what appeared to be a plastic easter egg with a small embryo inside. Testing would indicate that this fetus would be a stuffed toy of one of the aforementioned mascots with a plastic cardiovascular system and a latex endoskeleton indicating these mascots were able to breed and create artificial life that hunts down anything that reads their material and worst of all, enters Florida. The only way of stopping their pursuit due to their resistance to damage is to leave Florida or bring someone in your group who hasn't read the brochures. If not, you'll meet a jump scare creepypasta fate that any YouTuber would love to screamingly exploit for easy to farm views and thumbnails. Whoa, dude, are you serious? Are you serious? SCP 3643 identifies itself as this guy the Zodiac Killer famous unidentified serial killer active throughout the 1960s and 70s. It currently sends letters to the SCP organization professing the employee of an organization called the Keffert Corporation. In conjunction with letters mailed by the Zodiac Killer 50 years ago, back in 1969, yet this time requesting campaign donations of up to $50,000 weekly to the Keffert Corporation to prevent civilian attacks, as well as cryptogram encoded messaging in indicating that SCPs of the safe class would be periodically released if the SCP org does not comply with these financial contributions. A messenger bearing the resemblance of Mark Ruffalo will stand outside Site 81 awaiting this transaction. If this foe Mark Ruffalo is warded off, killed, and dissected or placed in containment, then a random SCP will be breached from its containment without any rhyme or reason as another Mark Ruffalo will be sent the following week. Dissections bear no fruit except to show the DNA results of the supposed Zodiac Killer Arthur Lay Allen, and if Mark Ruffalo is contained and prevented from leaving, he will simply explode in a bloody mess within 48 hours just to reappear at the front gates, asking for more money. The potential for this killer to ask for campaign contributions to a corporation with no business history to speak of, or else a random SCP safe class being released at random, could have the potential to snowball effect into something that could lead to wanton death and destruction. All thanks to this man. SCP-3646 is a species of mosquito that is only really discernible from the regular pests via its white discoloration and long feather appendage protruding from its abdomen. They do not age, nor do they have any known sexual characteristics. 
Upon the mosquito's death, any person touching its corpse directly will immediately begin to display symptoms of what has been broadcasted to the public as a new form of the Zika virus. Although the symptoms are varying and not really anything close to the Zika virus, within the first one to two hours, a victim will begin to hallucinate and hear a mosquito's buzzing around their ear, causing them to swipe at the air near them. Five to eight days in, will subjects begin to hear this buzzing as if multiple mosquitoes were right near their ear, causing them to develop unending goosebumps all over their body that make them feel like their skin must be covered up at all times. 12 to 14 days after the infection, they will begin to see hallucinations of these mosquitoes swarming their arms, legs, and neck with more appearing or disappearing every seven minutes, causing them to be heavily agitated and swatting violently at the area near them, disregarding any one else nearby. 17 to 20 days in will sleep deprivation set in, as the visual and auditory hallucinations will be non-stop, resulting in stinging pains all over the body with itching sensations consuming the limbs, neck, and face. Up to 22 days in will welts similar to mosquito bites begin to develop all over the subject's frame, as the infected will say the buzzing sounds have slowly turned into what can only be described as screaming. 12 hours after the last stage of infection, victims will have the entirety of blood within their body dematerialize and kill the host instantaneously. Soon after the death caused by SCP-3646, large amounts of new mosquito life forms will emerge from the corpse and start this process all over again for anyone that may kill and touch these little bastards' bodies further. SCP-3649 is a cluster of altostratus cloud formations that maintains a status position relative to the Earth's surface. All kinds of matter attempting to pass through this massive cumulus will be met with destruction. All radio signals passing through it are instantly disrupted, and any physical matter attempting to travel through will have their molecular structure collapsed and eradicated. Being in this static state, any kind of aircraft passenger included mistakenly flying through this would easily be destroyed without leaving a trace. So be careful the next time you're on a flight and your pilot decides to travel through some clouds, or else everything around you will be disintegrated down to your molecules. Safe travels! SCP-3674 is an entity capable of hijacking an entire SCP facility without any further interference due to its hostile takeover. The SCP was able to wipe out 44 out of 97 agents in this facility, as well as 18 armed emergency response units. It's unknown if it is either a group of creatures or just one individual capable of metamorphosizing into multiple different forms. Eyewitness reports have stated they have seen four different designations, one being a human male with the owl head with raven-like wings, another being a man in a lab coat with a shifting face adorning a sword coated in flames, the third being a stork capable of human speech, and the last being an unidentified creature who can speak at obnoxiously loud levels of up to 135 decibels comparable to a jet plane taking flight. The fact that an entity like this, having either an un told amount of random soldiers, or just being able to take on any form with infinite capabilities that can indefinitely hold an SCP facility hostage is enough to place it in the Keter class for its long-standing deadly potential. SCP-3675 is a group of incorporeal sapient entities living within a veritable different reality than ours, only being able to interact with our world through the process of interfacing with conscious thoughts and emotions within the brain, being able to control them when certain triggers and conditions are met in the gray matter. By imbuing themselves into communicable and understandable information like text, video, music, or more, it can unknowingly infect someone and move into their brain, causing a range of effects 
subjects from forgetfulness and confusion to extreme paranoia. The text or information in question will be slightly altered to include metaphysical subjects like religion, spirituality, and human nature. Those infected by this SCP can they themselves be carriers of the mental infection via an unknown vector process or sharing memetic information. It's currently estimated that 88% of the world's population is already currently plagued with SCP-3675 lying dormant for indefinite periods of time within their brain. Once all of these undisclosed mental, emotional, and informational triggers have all occurred at once for a person, then activation will occur within the mind. But more so than anything, the trigger can be the concept of the phrase, I wonder what happens to me after I die. Once the infected individual has been triggered, they can displace some or all of the symptoms of violent impulses, extreme pessimism towards humanity, lack of self-control and self-preservation, and lack of empathy, and an increase in sociopathic tendencies. More symptoms could divulge themselves, but as more of mankind, if secretly infected by a vector that is basically unstoppable and more, become violent pessimists looking for basically the end of the world, then things can go south really quick if these triggers are all met in succession for the majority of the populace. SCP-3689 is a sandwich. But not just any sandwich, but one of an info-hazardous recipe dubbed the Kraken's Belly by anyone that even conceives of the ingredients compromising its design. The components are comprised of, but not limited to, lemon, fresh whale, barbecue sauce, white chocolate chips, imitation crab, bacteria, gold, and wood shavings from a boat that sailed through a storm. If a person were to become aware of the ingredients and specific method of preparation, specifically as few as 15 ingredients and 5 steps of the preparation process, then they will fall under the effects of SCP-3689. While subjugated to its influence, a person will grow extremely starved, developing high levels of hunger and thirst alongside stomach pain with a loss of taste and smell. The only thing able to satisfy this insatiable hunger is the Kraken's Belly Sandwich. Due to the extremely rare and convoluted list of ingredients even shown, making the sandwich for just about anyone is pretty much out of the question, causing whoever falls prey to the SCP to endlessly hunt for these ingredients to attempt to make and and eat the fabled sandwich. If info on the sandwich and its preparation were to be widely distributed, then thousands or even millions of people could fall victim to this insatiable hunger and either die of starvation, panicking in the streets causing chaos, or just offing themselves from not being able to prepare it. Substitutes can be made to temporarily satiate the hunger pangs, but in some cases, if this substitute of ingredients is made and made poorly, a sudden flood of seawater will rush the area, sweeping the victim away to never be seen again, as they are picked up by a 16th century pirate ship to be executed by a sword. SCP-370 is a basic key, but knowing of its size, shape, material, and appearance will cause the effects of the SCP to spur a disease within a person, with three different versions existing dependent on the host's personality traits. Self-centered and cowardly people will find any way possible to off themselves and upon death will their body glow brilliantly and transform into nothingness. People who are extroverted and altruistic as well as sadistic and violent individuals will suddenly become calm before going on an indiscriminate killing spree with all of their victims glowing and suddenly disappearing. After killing up to three victims, the flesh of the murderers will glow brightly, eventually inhibiting the sympathetic nervous response in other people to make it where others cannot fight back against this new murderer. When the infected reaches a killing spree of up to six, their skin can instantly kill anyone that purely touches it, and making eye contact with this killer will spread the infection instantaneously. After killing 50 people, the infected will cease its killing spree and then raise its hands as if a divine spirit to have a beacon take it away before it chants, take me home. And anyone that hears this chant, even through soundproofing, will instantly become infected by the SCP. 
The third set of traits that give a different type of infection are those of high intellect and contemplative personality. Upon being infected, they will silently contemplate for 30 seconds, saying they are praying. They will then gain full knowledge of how SCP-370 works and actively speak to others via broadcast, direct conversation, or written documents trying to spread the details of the fabled key to others to infect them. Now, if you think about it, being a murderer that can turn people by actually getting a killing spree, well, they can be stopped pretty quickly if you have armed people nearby. But a casual, peaceful, smart guy just talking about about a key is way more discreet about spreading this mental disease that can cause people to either burst into light or start murdering everyone around them. Now, after 50 successful infections, this smart host talking about the key will suddenly burst into a faint glow of light. Anyone viewing this burst has a chance of becoming infected the longer they spectate it. The wild and unpredictable nature of knowing about this key is almost impossible possible to stop once it has begun its spread. SCP-3718 resembles an ordinary house cat, yet when looking at its reflection, will its true form only be seen? Being a creature nearly two and a half feet tall, dark in coloration, and covered with multiple mouth-like orifices with multiple teeth with no eyes or ears, tons of whiskers scattered across their frame, and even though completely different in shape and size to its real-world cat fursona, it will not occupy the same space the reflection shows. They they roam areas across the United States, hunting in packs, killing, and nearly completely consuming prey like elks, birds, and other wild animals. Once it sees a viable target, it will grow in size to unleash digestive enzymes all over their body in order to deteriorate them enough to where they cannot move, and then the prey is drug into its mouth and ground up within its body by dozens of razor-sharp teeth within its innards. Due to their high rate of repopulation and active hunting lifestyle, they are extremely dangerous to ecosystems, endangering livestock and more, as well as having these creatures potentially hunting humans as well if their usual prey isn't around to fill their stomachs. They have hunted everything else to extinction. Imagine a stray cat just sitting there when suddenly stomach acid pours all over you out of nowhere as you are drugged into an orifice you cannot even see as you are shredded to pieces and eaten whole. SCP-3740 is a Class 8 humanoid reality-altering entity similar to, or believed to be Ashur, the Assyro-Babylonian god of air and head of the Assyrian pantheon of deities. It is capable of manipulating air currents at its own discretion. It can also speak with flying animals while also having the power to control air pressure and temperature. Due to these abilities, it can easily produce gusts of wind over 500 kilometers or 310 miles per hour. Mixed in with cyclones, tornadoes, and other weather events involving high winds and air pressure, the SCP can speak over a dozen languages, several of which are dead. Its capabilities are hindered purely by the fact that the handsome lad is extremely gullible, believing what anyone will tell him at face value as long as he believes someone else is of equal godlike power to him, which only takes simple parlor tricks like those involving playing cards, and he will do and believe whatever they say if they can convince him. If someone were to convince this gullible master of wind, then cataclysmic destruction could follow in his wake. Hurricanes, tornadoes, everything you can think of would blow down major cities and establishments. SCP-3758 is the thought-to-be extinct bird species of Dodo. Thought to be exterminated from the island of Mauritius due to European traders and invasive species since 1681. However, three have been noted living on the planted outside of human intervention. What makes this historically derpy avian a deadly SCP is the fact that when only one surviving member is present on the planet by itself, it will undergo a drastic evolution when the second to last Dodo dies. Transforming into basically a beaked dinosaur referred scientifically as a Gigantoraptor Erlianensis. Standing 5 meters or 16 feet tall and weighing in at 1.6 thousand kilograms or 3.5 thousand pounds. 
It does not hold any hostile intents or bloodlust, but what it does hold is extremely high levels of radiation. Due to its existence as a lone part of its species, it will seek companionship by looking for other animals and people to congregate with, only to cause them to slowly and excruciatingly die to radiation poisoning and other correlated effects. A dodo roaming this world, just wanting a friend after the rest of its species is dead and gone, only to see anything it approaches die horribly before its eyes. If you feel sorry for it and try to comfort it or it enters your area, you won't worry about empathy much longer or anything else for that matter. SCP-3760 is a mutagenic phenomenon possibly spread through direct eye contact. The effect of this SCP spurs when a person experiences any kind of injury, no matter how large or minuscule they may be. Instead of the body's natural response to just heal back to normal, it will instead try to grow one of the following mutations, including scales that look like pointed teeth, cartilage growths, constantly open eyes, nasal ducts, teeth, and or jaws. These newly grown organs on the body will be fully functional and can be felt, and these new orifices will seek edible material for consumption. If any type of blood is present, a voracious attitude will be adopted by this growth, and even cannibalism by this part of the body will be resorted to. If the hunger cannot be satiated by this new growth, it will start to blacken and decay as if undergoing necrosis. If removal of the necrotic tissue or body part occurs, then another nearby part of the body will suddenly begin to mutate to become one of these mutations all over again. It will never stop appearing on your body. Examples of this occurrence are being a subject experiencing a small hangnail leading to a majority of his arm being darkened and decayed beyond repair as the effect continued to spread when they tried to take out and amputate the growths, or a giant monster-like tumor growing on the back of a subject's neck when they tried to amputate a growth on the back of his neck, or what looks like the the jaw of an anglerfish adapting across a subject's eyelid. His eyes are literally as big as the mouth. Due to the ease of transmission and necessity to eat whatever their growths crave or else necrosis could relentlessly devastate the body, this SCP would lead to a Cronenberg's mutant-infested apocalypse before long. SCP-3843 is an NPC in a video game that will infect other video games in its vicinity by placing itself in said games. It will go by a name similar to Sam or Sammy and adapt its look to that of the genre and aesthetic of the game, although its dialogue will not. The effects of the SCP will activate when a live-action person playing the game interacts with this NPC. Once spoken to, the player will suddenly gain knowledge and skills akin to that of their own NPC game character as well as minor physical alterations to the body to match it as well. If you're playing Mario, you'll be better at jumping and you'll grow a mustache. If you're playing Call of Duty, you'll know how to use firearms. However, if the playable character the person is playing is not human, the body will rapidly transform to attempt to become the non-human character. However, it won't be a dream of you becoming a Krogan stud or a cute little Pikachu as your body will literally destroy itself internally to try and achieve this new form, but at least you'll leave behind a hot and sexy and cool corpse. Well, Morgan, don't take that as me calling Pikachu sexy, okay? Don't do it. Krogans are sexy, but Pikachu not. While more games feature non-human characters, the plus side of effects are people proficient in home building, farming, and of course, first person killing. But if you're playing a non-human, you're going to be dead. There's just going to be a lot of people proficient in killing, so we'll see how that goes. SCP-3884 is a black IFA W50 cab over truck that can reach max speeds of up to 270 kilometers per hour and displays reality bending effects. It will always appear outside high population areas like local gatherings at strip malls, markets, or downtown areas. It will release a creature designated 
as 3884-01. Being a heavily decomposed man dressed in a German combat helmet, leather trench coat, and combat boots. It will attempt to give out and distribute wares to the public. And the wares in question being flamethrowers, rocket launchers, landmines, anti-material rifles, machine guns, and other instruments of destruction by throwing all of it on the ground and loudly speaking to the public crazily like he was a simple street merchant just selling some junk. If anyone, including civilians or law enforcement, attempt to hinder or detain this decayed weapons dealer from giving out these kinds of weapons, the truck behind him will explode in a giant fireball while the decayed man himself will vanish into nothing in an instant. While the blast is sure to kill a few or at least injure some people, the fact that weapons like these are just handed out freely out of thin air could lead to wide-scale anarchistic slaughters and destruction, especially considering the fact that all weapons obtained from the decayed man will have a long message of a flyer with some of the text saying this. It's time to lock and load, citizens. Do you want to be safe? Do you want to show those bastards how tough you are? Are you as fucking terrified as I am? Now you can defend yourself and your loved ones with this excellent shooters and blow em ups. I made them myself and they're real good. This is not a drill. Civilization is under attack right now by some nasty characters that are definitely not from around here. I can make these things out of thin air like some kind of goddamn shotgun wizard for reasons that are beyond my understanding. And I'm passing the savings on to you. God, that hurt my throat. SCP-3891 is an amalgamation of an untold amount of human corpses accumulating to just over 250,000 kilograms or half a million pounds. It floats 3,000 meters in the sky, moving at 55 kilometers per hour. It will linger above low population areas using its festering, barnacle-encrusted tentacles to ensnare and pull people into its mass and integrating their flesh into its own. It most commonly hovers over private domiciles and uses its limbs to breach through windows to grab people while they slumber. It targets people suffering from mental illness, low financial situations, the recently unemployed, poor physical health, the divorced, those who have attempted to off themselves recently, or suffered some other personal tragedy. Its body is comprised of decomposed human flesh along with bile consisting of seawater, serous fluid, saliva, endometrial mucus, gastric acid, and even semen. Come again? If it feels threatened in any way, it will emit toxic clouds of gas made of sarin, phosgene, mustard gas, human blood, carbon dioxide, and water vapor before disappearing instantly to appear somewhere else also randomly on Earth. So if you try to attack it, it will poison the hell out of you. Now if you fit any of the conditions listed earlier when it comes to being downtrodden, you may find yourself being drug away via tentacle in the night to be absorbed into a mass of depression and dissolved into a gas of suppression. SCP-3906 is an ontokinetic entity resembling an embryonic duck of huge size floating in midair. It appears in the Visayas regions of the Philippines. Shortly after a Sunalong Sanon Nino festival, will this SCP appear in the household of citizens that attended the gatherings? While in a building, all prepubescent people inside will slowly start to suffer spontaneous thermal-related injuries all over their body that develop more and more every 15 to 30 minutes. If there are no prepubescents in the dwelling, all people inside will suddenly have their lungs filled with an assortment of rock salt, vinegar, and silane lubuyo peppers. If it decides not to appear in a household, it will linger in the sky and affect multiple homes all at once. It could change its designated gathering event to just about anything at any given time if it decides so, and if you go home after one of these gatherings, you could find your kids burning alive or your lungs filling with spicy materials as you asphyxiate a cabanero death. SCP-3916 is a species of insect that resembles the Australian plague locust, with it deviating into species known as 3916-0 and 3916-1. 3916-0 only eats plant matter, while dash 1 will eat any and all kinds of matter before it with a preference for fresh organic material. These faux locusts reproduce asexually through the process of just eating so much that once it hits a certain size, around 
around 500 grams or over one pound of matter, it will just split off into two smaller versions of itself. Dash 1 can only do this cloning via consumption of organic materials. The insects also eat hellaciously fast, so reproduction is near constant for the swarms that come from this gluttony. Dash 1, due to its diet, has developed a heavy immunity to all types of chemicals and have awareness of weaponry enough to swarm guns and ammunition to eat and protect themselves. They can only be exterminated via the use of extreme amounts of heat and radiation. So napalm strikes, flamethrowers, and uh, nuclear strikes are about only thing we're going to be doing. But due to their size and numbers and how quickly they can spread, it's going to be nearly impossible to completely eradicate them before they gather numbers all over again. If even one were to get away or if someone were to capture one and let it loose, it would just make an entire army of locusts again. Entire towns can be wiped out in a matter of hours by this biblical swarm as these locusts can make their way through any defenses via consumption to slowly devour you alive with your flesh serving to create more and more insects in a matter of minutes. Even the vegetarian version of 3916-0 would be devastating as it raises the planet of most plant life being an ever-expanding force destroying vegetation leading to the food chain being wiped out, dust storms cloud in the air and oxygen being less plentiful over time. The world's devastation as these bugs cloud the sky, eating all biological life, would be an unstoppable force before long. SCP-3926 is a TV talk show called Saturday Evenings with your host, Tial Kanek. Being a reptilian humanoid, the strangely named fellow will bring up issues with humanity and preach his own word as truth. If viewed three or more times by anyone, then a viewer will become infected by the SCP, believing wholeheartedly of what he speaks. And if you say anything otherwise against what he is preaching, the infected will react angrily. Two to three days after infection, the host will begin to molt and create a bed from their own phlegm, shivering and going into a fetal position until they finally shed their human skin. Emerging as a green humanoid without a face or genitals, their consciousness is now completely eradicated. The infected will seek out people to either convince or forcibly make them watch the television show to spread the word in the hope of turning all of humanity into these mindless humanoids glued to their TV. Now I already know one of you is turning this into some political satire joke, but here you are, watching YouTube. You're not any better, and neither am I. Now, you want to watch this cool show hosted by Tialkanek? It's really cool. Just watch it three times. I swear it gets better after the third episode. <laughs> SCP-3968 are basically Borderlands grenades if they could fuck like plants and are two variations of a similar landmine. Dash 1 being close to an American M14 landmine with minimal metals to avoid detection and use as anti-personnel to spur traumatic amputation, while Dash 2 is similar to the American M16 landmine that launches into the air to burst at waist height and spread in a full 360 degrees for lethal results. Now what makes them as SCPs is the fact that the shrapnel at or above one centimeter in size left behind by both of these devices can grow to become full versions of the exact same mine that produced it. This growth is dependent on soil quality, climate, and nearby nutrient sources, usually sapping nutrition from the dead bodies it creates, causing them to decompose supernaturally. Dash 1's explosions causing up to 200 instances of reproduction, while Dash 2 can make upwards of 400 new mines. Also, instead of these mines tripping when stepped on, they both also have awareness of when the most optimal time to explode to maximize their killing potential is. You Usually, they will wait for large groups of people or animals or other large sources like vehicles to draw close enough to kill as much as possible to use their flesh as premium shrapnel nutrition, creating more and more all-natural landmines to dot the land further and further. Go get these landmines at your local Whole Foods Market. 
SCP-3974 is a chocolatey pandemic, and our last SCP for today. Originating from four children who harbor an unknown viral pathogen that spreads through direct physical contact or bodily fluids. From there, the pathogen will rearrange tissues into a material 80% identical to chocolate. Symptoms during chocolatization include fever, skin lesions, lethargy, diarrhea, loss of mobility, and vomiting. After a while, the victim will become chocolate head to toe and then die of organ failure. There is no coming back from going to the chocolate side. The four children capable of spreading this pathogen all look chocolatey in texture and appearance and can begin to visibly melt at temperatures over 17 degrees Celsius or 62 degrees Fahrenheit. They need to stay in cold climates or else their figure will begin to melt and they are not able to restore their figure to what it once was. They are not able to heal or they are, they're just restricted to what they become from melting. So the fact that purely touching them or being touched by them can have you turned into a dessert and that their bodily fluid could harbor this pathogen that could easily be spread means a widespread outbreak of chocolate formed people could happen. These four children in the disfigured state could be against the world and could use this pathogen to turn people and things could just spread from there. That about wraps up things for today. If you like what you heard, didn't like what you heard, or that I skimmed over some SCPs, there was quite a few I didn't cover today because they just didn't really have any kind of dangerous potential or just kind of dragged on and I thought was boring. Now, if you want a part six in the Keter class series or Keter, whatever you want to pronounce it, or want to suggest a different why you wouldn't survive, let me know in the comments. It's been a year since the last one, so maybe if this one does well, we can make the time frame for part six a lot less longer. The channel gets by thanks to beautiful people like you for just watching. And I can never thank you enough for taking the time out of your day to watch what dumb stuff comes out of my brain and out of my mouth. If you want to support the channel a bit further and you don't have to if you don't want, but if you want to be featured here, you can do so in a number of ways, like being a longtime supporter, donating to my Patreon as a patron, or joining as a member of the channel by hitting join on my channel page. Also, huge fucking shout out to Wisefish. He has been a trooper doing this video for me. I've been trying to get back in the groove of things and I really appreciate his help. Go check out his channel. He does a lot of fantastic lore videos with a very sexy voice. Don't you have a sexy voice, Wisefish? Get out of my office! That's right. Now be sure to check out my other SCP videos by clicking the link above or checking out the rest of the Why You Wouldn't Survive series by clicking this link right here. And until next time, I'm Wild Such Gaming, aka Zackass. See ya, put a little 180 on you. Stay safe, stay secure, stay contained, stay protected, and never forget to stay wow. Well.